Lift up those hands right now and give them thanks. And give them thanks. Raso Balate. Praise you, Father. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him thanks unto the Father who has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Go ahead and give him praise. Lebro zakala da babra gadimba lana mosekele de brona katongele ne moza kala de baboro kotone keline mamombro godoze kelia. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we rejoice that tonight we have all that pertains to life and godliness on our inside. And we have access into the deep things of God by the Holy Ghost. So we rejoice that tonight as we spend time fellowshipping in the light that is in your word, revelation knowledge is gifted everybody under the sound of my voice. Bodies and yokes are destroyed. Whatever is not planted by God is rooted out. Your people are built up, equipped, edified, and Jesus is glorified. Thank you, Father, for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer sees a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together. As we say these words, I am born of God. I am born of the word. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore, today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Are we excited to fellowship in the world this evening? Can we celebrate our fellowship with a shout? Amen. Glory. Amen. Glory. Amen. amen. Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self this evening. We want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. All of the social media community, brothers and sisters online. We're so glad to have all of you connected to the service. What a way to begin a year. What a way to begin the next 12 months of your life. What a way to begin in the world. That's the best way to begin in the world. And I want to encourage you to invite friends, tag somebody, share the videos, put them on all the various platforms. Let's get the word around the world. What a joy to be here. We want to welcome also those of you that are connected by way of radio in a quiet bomb state. Wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice, call a friend, a family member, a loved one. Ask them to tune to this radio station right now. Life is flowing through the airwaves. We also want to welcome all our campuses around the world. What a joy to have all of you brothers and sisters all over the nations. It's so exciting to know that we have another opportunity God has given to us another year to affect the world with the fragrance of Jesus' grace. Glory to God. All right, let's get in the word this evening. <clears throat> we began to lay some foundation yesterday as it pertains to spiritual growth. The last series we finished was discovering spiritual growth. Yesterday, we began to deal with the core spiritual growth. Now, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 2. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And I said yesterday, this is about the clearest sentence in any epistle about an instruction to grow. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. I took time to make you see that God's heartbeat, God's intent for us as a ministry, as a mission, as a, you know, an apostolic house this year is to grow spiritual growth. And it's so critical because it will take spiritual growth to produce ministry out of you. And the mandate that God has given to the church is to go and make disciples of all nations. And if we're going to be involved in making disciples of all nations, then growth is an imperative or growth is a necessity. And that is why God will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Coming to the knowledge of the truth is spiritual growth. And it's so critical. Because he that descended is he that ascended up on high. And upon his ascension, he gave gifts to men, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastoring teachers. For the perfecting of the saints. Why will the saints be perfected? In view of the work of ministry. 
So spiritual growth is in view of ministry. Because every child of God is called to the ministry. Every child of God is called to serve his generation with the mandate and the message of the gospel. This is so critical because, you know, in the book of First Peter, Second Peter, chapter 3, verse 18, look at the way Brother Peter communicates the same thoughts. Second Peter, chapter 3, verse 18. But grow in grace. How do you grow in grace? And in the knowledge. So growth in grace is growth in knowledge. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at that first Peter again, chapter 1, verse 1, 2, and 3. First Peter, chapter 1, verse 1, 2, and 3. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered abroad or scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Next verse. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit. Through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Give me verse 3 now. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So we are begotten unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. So yesterday we established that the resurrection of Jesus has given us two things. Number one, it has begotten us again unto a lively hope. That's the first thing we got out of the resurrection. It is out of the resurrection of Jesus that we received eternal life. So salvation is a product of the resurrection of Jesus. Now observe that verse 3 of First Peter chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Look at the next verse now, verse 4. Unto, verse 4, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled. And that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you. Two things came out of the resurrection of Jesus. Number one, he has begotten us unto a lively hope by his resurrection. Then number two, unto an inheritance, undefiled, incorruptible, that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you. So, there is an inheritance that is reserved for you in heaven. You are begotten, number one, and then number two, to an inheritance that is reserved for you in heaven. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Now, look at First Peter chapter 1 verse 9. Let me just get to where we stopped yesterday, and you can get the material yesterday's second service. It says, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. So we said the word end is the word telos in the Greek. It means the closure or the outcome. The closure, telos, T-E-L-O-S. The closure or the outcome. So the closure will be the salvation of your souls. We took time to establish yesterday that souls in this context or in Bible context is not talking about the mind. It's talking about the entire being. Your entire being is referred to as the soul. So receiving the end of your salvation or receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul, of your entire being. So the complete salvation of the believer will be at the end of time. It has not been fulfilled. It will be fulfilled at the end of time. Right now, you are saved. But you have not gotten to the end of that salvation. Alright, look at verse 10 of that same First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1 verse number 10. Put it up for me. First Peter chapter 1 verse number 10. Glory to God. First Peter chapter 1 verse number 10. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that shall come unto you. Next verse. Such in what, such in what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify 
when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that shall follow. Next verse. Next verse. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Look at the next verse. Verse number 13. Wherefore, get up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So there is a grace that is to be brought to you at that revelation of Jesus Christ. So it means that all born again believers have an expectation. Have an expectation. And it's supernatural. All believers have an expectation. Now look at verse 14 of that same scripture. First Peter chapter 1 verse 14. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lost in your ignorance. Please pay attention. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lost in your ignorance. So he calls you an obedient child or obedient children. That gives us some caution. Verse 7 of that First Peter chapter 1. Look at verse 7. Then we look at verse 14. First Peter 1 7. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Now then look at verse 14 of that scripture now. He says, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lost in your ignorance. He gives us the word grow, but he doesn't use it as a figure of speech. But then in verse 14, he says, as obedient children. A better translation should read, as children of obedience. That's a better translation of that verse. As children of obedience is the word hupokoi. Hupokoi. H-U-P-A-K-O-E. H-U-P-A-K-O-E. All right, now, so let's look at that word, obedience, one more time. Children of obedience, not as children who obey. There's a difference. There's a difference between children of obedience from children who obey. He is not saying you are children who obey. He says you are children of obedience. Look at Romans chapter 1 verse 5. Romans chapter 1 verse number 5 Romans chapter 1 verse number 5 not 15 verse 1 but whom we have received or by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith or obedience of the faith. Children of obedience. That's what I'm working on now. Look at Romans chapter 5 verse 19. Romans chapter 5 verse number 19. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous by the obedience of one. Obedience here, hupakoi, is an action. Obedience of the faith. It's an action. Obedience of the faith. Look at Romans chapter 6 verse 16. Romans chapter 6 verse number 16. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Obedience unto righteousness. So it's an action. Obedience is an action. Look at Romans chapter 15 verse 18. Romans chapter 15 verse 18. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ had not wrought by me. To make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. It's an action word. 
to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. Look at Romans chapter 16 verse 26. Romans chapter 16 verse 26. A lot of scriptures but very good for your saintly dignity. But now it's made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. For the obedience of faith. So quickly look at 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 15. Second Corinthians chapter 7 verse number 15. And his inward affection is more abundant toward you. While he remembered the obedience of you all. While he remembered the obedience of you all. How with fear and trembling you received him. The obedience of you all. So every time you read the word obedience in the epistles is an action. Have you observed? It's not a continual action, but a singular action. It's not a continuous action. It's a singular action. For example, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 and 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 5 and 6. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God... I'm bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience. When your obedience is fulfilled. Not the obedience of Christ, but your own obedience. So it's an action. Your obedience is fulfilled. When is your obedience fulfilled? When you believed. When you believed the gospel, that was when your obedience was fulfilled. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8, talking about Jesus. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8. Though he were a son, yet learned the obedience by the things which he suffered. By the things which he suffered. So First Peter chapter 1 verse 2, now pay attention here. First Peter chapter 1 verse number 2. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience. Sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Question. Whose obedience? The obedience of Christ or your obedience? Huh? Put it up again. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Whose obedience? Your own obedience. All right, your own obedience. So, First Peter now, chapter one, verse twenty-two. Pay attention. First Peter, chapter one, verse twenty-two. Seeing you have purified, you see that you have purified your souls, and how did you do that? In obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfailing love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently now so that obedience is your obedience or my obedience so what exactly is the obedience he is referring to in all of the scriptures the obedience is believing the gospel which is once and not a continuous action believing the gospel so you are children of obedience you are children of that obedience of believing the gospel. So he says, because you are now born again, you are not fashioning yourselves according to your former laws in your ignorance. The word fashioning yourselves is used two times. And is the word suche matizo. Suche matizo. It's spelled as S-U-S. S-U-S. C-H-E. 
M-A-T-I-Z-O. Suchematizo. Fashioning yourselves. That word is used in Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Be not conformed to this world. Suchematizo. Be not conformed. Okay? Every time it's used in the Greek, it means to assume a form. To assume a form. In other words, to remake yourself to be what you are not. To remake yourself to be what you are not. Or to take on a form that is contrary to who you are. So he said, not fashioning yourselves according to your former lusts. In other words, he's saying that those lusts are not yours anymore. Those lusts are not yours anymore. Look at First Peter chapter 1 verse 14. Pay attention. First Peter chapter 1 verse number 14. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. Verse 15 now. But as he which had called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. So there's a holiness in your conduct. There is a holiness inbuilt in your conduct. Look at verse 16 and 17 of that first Peter chapter 1. Because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. Next verse. And if you call on the father who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. Pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. Do you realize that in talking conduct, he lays the foundation of identity before he starts talking conduct. He lays the foundation of identity. So, he lays conduct on the identity of the believer. He lays his teaching of conduct on the identity of the believer. He doesn't use conduct to define you. He first of all identifies you. And based on your identity... He now explains your conduct in that identification. So he wants conduct to be defined by your identity. He wants conduct to be defined by your identity. First Peter chapter 1 verse number 17 again. Mm -mm, I love that one. And if you call on the Father, if your Bible is mine, I will underline call on the Father. If you call on the Father, who without respect of persons judgeth every man or judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. The word call on Father is a Greek word, epikalia, epikalia, E-P-I-K-A-L-E-A. -E Epikalia, E-P-I, that's the Greek word for call on father. It means to address us. It's active. And we will check it later in the course of this teaching. It's to address us or to address the father. Call on father. So he's teaching judgment and he is talking about your conduct. He is laying the foundation of your conduct on your person. The foundation of your conduct on your identity. I think it was yesterday, honey, we were talking about it. And you were saying, before you tell believers to behave, you must tell them who they are. That is apostolic teaching. Don't hammer on people's behavior. First of all, people are behaving the way they are behaving based on whether they know who they are or they don't even know who they are. And if a man doesn't know who he is, don't blame him for behaving anyhow. Because anyhow is the only way he can behave. Anyhow is the only way. He can behave. The man is lost. He doesn't know who he is. Tomorrow he will tell you he's a woman. Next tomorrow he will tell you he's a man and woman in one body. Because he doesn't know who he is. He doesn't know who he is. He can't even tell he's a monkey. He can tell he's an improved version of baboon. Because he doesn't know who he is. So, don't tell him to behave. He cannot behave otherwise. His behavior will stem from the revelation of who he is. 
teaching good tonight. So it is identity first before conduct. Then it now lets you know that your conduct matters. After explaining the identity of the believer and he begins to lay the conduct of your identity before you, he now makes you know that your conduct matters. He says he will try every man's work. That the father will try every man's work. So pass your sojourn in here with fear. Now look at verse 17 of First Peter. I love brother Peter, I tell you. He did justice in this book. And if you call on the father who without respect of persons judges according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourn in here in fear. Next verse. Verse 18. We're going to go to verse 20. For as much as you know, as much as you what? Know. Knowledge. Key. As much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. Next verse. But with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Next verse. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Next verse, 21. Who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. Who by him you do believe in God. Look at now verse 22. He now says, based on your believing in God, seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart, fervently. Not hypocritical love, but love that is coming from a sincere heart, a pure heart. All right? Love that is coming from a pure heart. Now, the word purify is different from the word agnizo. Soul, we've established, is your life. Your soul is your life. The word agnizo is to cleanse. A-G-N-I-Z-O. Agnizo is to cleanse. And it can be ceremonial. Can be ceremonially used to cleanse. Agnizo. For example, look at the word agnizo in Acts 21, 25. Acts chapter 21, verse number 25. Glory to God. As touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing, save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols and from blood and from strangled, from strangled and from fornication. So this is ceremonial cleansing. The word keep yourselves or keep themselves in the word agnizo to cleanse yourself. Look at Acts 21 26. Acts 21 verse 26. Then Paul took the men and the next day, purifying himself with them, entered into the temple to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification until that an offering should be offered. For every one of them, ceremonial cleansing. So notice, the word agnizo is ceremonial and it was used to keep from, keep from, okay, to keep from. Now, whenever, whenever that word is used, is from death or defilement. Look at Acts 24, 18. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 24, verse 18. Whereupon certain Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, neither with multitude nor with tumult. It's away from something or against something. Pay attention. James 4, verse 8. Same word, agnizo. James, chapter 4, verse 8. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. What are you purifying your hearts from? You are purifying your heart from being double-minded. Purify your heart from, or purify your heart away from, or purify your heart against. 
purify your heart from or purify your heart away from or purify your heart against now it will add up in a few minutes first john chapter 3 verse 3 first john chapter 3 verse number 3 and every man that had this hope in him purified himself even as he is pure so the word agnizo it's against a defilement or a prevention against a defilement or a prevention now look at first peter chapter 1 verse 22 first peter chapter 1 verse 22 see you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently love of the brethren is a Greek word Philadelphia. A friendly love and affection. Philadelphia or what we call filio. You know there's agape, there's eros, there's filio. Okay, so filio or Philadelphia. Then there's another word, Adolphus. Brotherly love or a love of members of the same family. Adolphus. That is, you love those in your family, in your fondness. You love those in your family, in your fondness. That is, you must like them. Okay? Look at Romans chapter 12 verse 10. Romans chapter 12 verse number 10. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another with brotherly love in honor so the brotherly love will be in honor and the honor there is that you will prefer one another you will prefer others to yourself brotherly love all right now first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 9 brother paul first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 9 but as touching brotherly love you need not that I write unto you, for you yourselves are taught of God to love one another. You are taught of God. Remember, you have already obeyed. Okay? So you are taught of God to love one another. Look at Hebrews chapter 13 verse 1, brother Paul. Hebrews chapter 13 verse number 1. Let brotherly love continue. Brother means Adolphus. Now when we say brotherly love, we are not saying there is sisterly love. Brotherly love covers for sisters and brothers. Brotherly love is the word Adolphus. Adolphus is neither male nor female. So it goes for both. The word Adolphus. Walking in love is quite a test of Christianity. Walking in love is quite a test of Christianity. So he gives us an instruction to like believers. To like believers. Because walking in love is quite a test of your Christian relationship with God. You have to accept someone that is not in your class. It's easier to accept people that are in your class, societal class. You are an engineer and you come among engineers. You feel belonging. But now when you come into Christ Jesus, you don't have that class mentality anymore. A brother that came from the gutter or from the ghettos for the global community. A brother that came from the gutter or the ghettos and is thinking the same way you hug a brother that has a perfume is the same way you hug that brother that is thinking. That is preferring that is being kindly affection towards the brethren. This has nothing to do with whether they look nice or they don't look nice. Whether they are the kind of people you expected to have met or not. The same Christ in you is in that brother even though his clothes are smelling. You need to find out where he is coming from to, to be in that disposition. You don't just laugh look down on him. That's not the love of Christ. That's not the love of Christ. 
Christ came down to your level in your mess, cleaned you up. And that same love that brought him down is the love at work in you as a believer. I'm teaching good tonight. Stay with me. Now, so if you really love God, you have to love his sons. If you really love God, you have to love his sons. That's why I told you that walking in love is quite a test of Christianity. So now look at First Peter chapter 1 verse number 3. I mean number 23. Why you should love the brethren. First Peter chapter 1 verse 23. Being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. Love one another with a pure heart not in hypocrisy or better still having been born again because that's the way it is in the original having been born again not with corruptible seed in other words we have the capacity to love in purity we have the capacity by regeneration by salvation we have the capacity to love in purity why because we have been born again when was the first time we read the word born again it was in verse 3 of first peter first peter chapter 1 verse 3 from verse 3 we looked at verse 23 blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again born again begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Verse 23 of 1 Peter chapter 1. Being born again. Having been born again. Not of corruptible seed. But incorruptible. Now. So just like Jesus in resurrection. We are also found born. Seed there is vital to us. Now the word seed is the word spora spora the word seed spora s-p-o-r-a is different from first john chapter 3 verse 9 that word seed in first peter 1 23 is different from the word in first john chapter 3 verse 9 put it up for me first john chapter 3 verse 9 whosoever is born of god doth not commit sin for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. That word seed there is different from the word seed in First Peter. This word seed in John, and I've taught you in church, there's no omnibus application of any Bible word. Bible words are only explained strictly within context. Okay, So seed in First Peter is porah. But seed here in, I mean, yeah, seed here in First John chapter 3 verse 9 is the word sperma. Sperma is used 43 times for a descent. Sperma, S-P-E-R-M-A. Because many assume that the word sperma means sperm. But that's not what it means. That word sperma is used for persons. Let's look at where it is used. Let's do a bit of exegesis on that word sperma. Matthew 13, 24 and 25. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 and 25. Another parable put it forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in the field. Next verse. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat. And went his way. So take note of the word there. The word to sow a seed. To sow a seed. Then look at Matthew 13, 37 to 38. Matthew chapter 13 verse 37 to 38. He answered and said unto them. He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. Now let's look at the word sperma. 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 Acts 3.25. Acts Chapter 3, verse number 25. Acts 3, 25. You are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers. Saying unto Abraham 
And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. In thy sperma, in thy seed. Acts chapter 7 verse 5. Please pay attention. Acts chapter 7 verse 5. And he gave him none, none inheritance in it. No, not so much as to set his foot on. Yet he promised that he will give it to him for a possession. And to his seed after him. When as yet he had no child. The word seed. Acts 7 verse 6. A lot of scriptures good for your saintly dignity. And God spake on this wise. That his seed should sojourn in a strange land. And that they should bring them into bondage. And entreat them evil for 400 years. His seed. His seed should sojourn. Acts 13 23. Acts of the apostles. Chapter 13 verse 23. Of this man's seed had God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a savior, Jesus. The word seed. Go to Romans chapter 1 verse 3. Romans chapter 1 verse number 3. Concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. The word seed, seed, sperma. Romans chapter 4 verse 13. Romans chapter 4 verse number 13. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law. But through the righteousness of faith to his seed through the law. The word seed, sperma. Romans chapter 4 verse 16. Romans chapter 4 verse 16. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. So look at again at Romans chapter 4 verse 18. Romans chapter 4 verse number 18. Who against hope believed in hope... That he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. Romans chapter 9 verse 7. Romans chapter 9 verse 7. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Romans chapter 9 verse 8. Romans chapter 9 verse number 8. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of, of the promise are counted for the sperma, for the seed. Okay? Galatians 3.16. Galatians chapter 3 verse number 16. 16. Galatians 3.16. Now to Abraham and his seed, where the promise is made, he saith not unto seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ, to thy sperma. Look at Galatians 3.19. Galatians chapter 3 verse 19. Wherefore then, serveth the law, it was added because of transgressions, till the seed, the sperma, should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Galatians 3.29. Galatians chapter 3 verse 29. And if you be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to promise. Are you Christ? Are you Christ? Then you are Abraham's sperma and heirs according to promise. In a few minutes, it will come in handy. Just pay attention. Hebrews eleven eighteen, Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 18. Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy sperma be called, shall thy seed be called. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 16. Hebrews chapter 2, verse number 16. For verily, he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the sperma of Abraham, the seed of Abraham. First Corinthians fifteen thirty-eight. First Corinthians 
chapter 15, verse number 38. But God giveth it a body as it has pleased him, and to every seed his own body. Now go back to 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. That's what brought us through all these readings. 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. So that will be sperma, okay, seed. Sperma will be that which will be a descendant, a descendant, a child, or someone you birth. A descendant, a child, or someone you birth. So let's look at, at that because it, you'll see how it flows. First John chapter 3 verse 7. First John chapter 3 verse 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous. Look at verse 8. 1 John 3, 8. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Kabayada. So, the Son of God's manifestation was to destroy the works of the devil. Now look at verse 9. Same chapter. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin because he is born of God. So his seed will be his descendants. His descendants does not commit sin. His descendants. So the word seed there is referred to birth. To birth. And in this, look at 1 John 3.10. 1 John chapter 3 verse 10. Are you still here? 1 John 3.10. In this, the children of God are manifest. And the children of the devil. Whosoever doth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. Neither he that loveth not his brother. So he uses the word sperma for descendants. So the word spora is different. Spora is a noun, a feminine noun. Spora refers to the act itself. The act of the birthing. Sperma is what was born. Spora will be how it was born. Sperma will be what was born. Spora will be how it was born. So 1 Peter 1 23. Glory. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23. Being born again not of corruptible seed. But of incorruptible by the word of God. Which liveth and abideth forever. Or being born again not of corruptible sowing. Spora. Corruptible sowing. The act. But incorruptible. In other words, he is saying that this birth cannot be corrupted. It cannot. That whatever comes out of this birth is perfect. Whatever comes out of this birth. Being born again, not of corruptible sowing. Spora. And we know why it cannot be corrupted. Because he says... The born again came out of the resurrection from the dead. So it cannot be corrupted. So if you are born from that resurrection, there cannot be a corruption in there. If you are born from the resurrection of Jesus, there can be no defect. There can be no corruption in there. That is everybody born again is born the same way. Being born again, not of corruptible seed. But he doesn't use incorruptible seed. Did you observe? Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible. 
He didn't say being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed. No, no. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. He just said, it's not of corruptible seed. The word corruptible is the word perishable. That which perishes. When it is used, it is used for natural things. Corruptible. Natural things. Look at where it is used. Romans one twenty three. Romans chapter 1 verse number 23. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wow. Alright. So, incorruptible. Look at 1 Corinthians 9.25. 1 Corinthians 9.25. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temp temperate in all things. Now, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we are incorruptible. Incorruptible crown. Look at 1 Corinthians 15.53. 1 Corinthians 1553 for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortality must put on immortality put on incorruption look at verse 54 verse 54 of the same chapter for when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that's written that is swallowed up where? In victory. Put on in corruption. So he uses the word perishable. Is the Greek word. The Greek word. P-E-T-H. I mean P-T-H-A-R-T-O-S. Fatos. Used for mortal things. Earthly or temporal. It is used for mortal things. Earthly or temporal. Now go back to. To verse 18 of First Peter chapter 1. Are you learning something? First Peter chapter 1 verse 18. Glory to God. For as much as you know. I'd like you to turn to your neighbor and say you know. As much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things. As silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. Next verse. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot. So he says you are born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. Which he now uses Romans 1.23 to describe as God, uncorruptible God. Born of incorruptible seed. Change the glory of the uncorruptible God. Okay, now, so, the uncorruptible God. So he says, uncorruptible God, he distinguishes man from God using the word uncorruptible and incorruptible. That's a distinguishing factor. Now look at 1 Corinthians 9.25. 1 Corinthians 9.25. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. He distinguishes what belongs to this earth. Corruptible crown. Then he says, we are going to receive incorruptible. Look at 1 Corinthians 15, 52. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. He makes a distinction between a mortal body and an immortal body. So he makes a contrast. A contrast. Look at 1 Timothy 1.17. Pay attention. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 17. Glory to God. First Timothy 117. Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The king immortal, invisible. He used that for God. 
He describes what God does. Now look at 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 4. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 4. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 4. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse number 4. But let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great prize. So look at it closely to what he is saying. First Peter 1 Peter 1.23 again, put it up. First Peter chapter 1 verse 23. Glory. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth for how long? Forever. So whatever this birth, whatever this birth produces is forever. Whatever this birth produces is forever. So he describes our inheritance which is reserved in heaven as incorruptible, undefiled, and that faded not away. It shows you that inheritance, the physical body, bears the character of our birth. The physical body bears the character of our birth. So the birth of this man who is called a believer, the birth of this man who is called a son of God. The birth of this man is eternal. Eternal. That is, the birth is eternal. It's an eternal birth. So, the inheritance. How many of you know that inheritance follows relationship? Okay? So, inheritance follows relationship. That means that the inheritance doesn't define us. We define the inheritance. The inheritance doesn't define us. We define the inheritance. Please pay attention. It's very important. We define that resurrected body. That body is called undefiled because we are not defilable. See? We, defiled, we define the body because we are not defilable. That is why that body is undefiled. That body faded not away because we fade not away. We define that inheritance. So pay good attention here. And you see why Peter had to lay this foundation strongly. The next verse explains it. 1 Peter 1.24 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 24 And you see the way I'm navigating through the scriptures and the kind of subject you are studying. That's why you must pray in the spirit before you come to these teachings. Pray in tongues. If not, you'll just be looking at me like this. And smiling and looking and smiling till we leave. You have to pray in the spirit because we are unveiling things that have to do with your identification and your responsibility. And these are not things you know with the physical eyes. These are things you only know by the spirit. Comparing spiritual with spiritual. Okay? I, and I do not intend to use parables on you. Okay? So, it's spirit, spirit. So, if you've got to be in the spirit. You've got to pray a lot. Glory to God. And I look forward to this kind of meetings every time. Because these meetings for me, I enjoy them. Enjoy the fellowship with you in the light and in the truth of the scriptures. Now, so 1 Peter 1, 24. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 24. For all flesh is as grass. And all the glory of man is as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, And the flower therefore faded, I mean falleth away. He is saying... Man does not last forever. That's what he's saying. Man and all his glory cannot last forever because he is flesh. He said, but this man, 
this man that is born again, not of corruptible seed, this man, because of the spora, the birth of this man, this man will be eternal. So what Peter first of all does is to let you see the foundation for spiritual growth. You don't grow into sonship. Sonship is undefiled. Sonship faded not away. Sonship is incorruptible. Sonship is eternal. Your state as a son is an eternal state. Your state as a son, as a son of God, is an eternal state. Your inheritance, which is the physical body that bears the character of who you are, is undefiled and it's eternal. Because you yourself, you're undefiled and you're eternal. Having laid that foundation, <laughs> having laid that foundation, he now says in 1 Peter 1.25, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 25, but the word of the Lord endured forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Hallelujah. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Did you observe how he said it? He is quoting the Old Testament by saying all flesh is grass but the word of God abides forever and he is letting you see that the man is the word of the, the man is the word of the Lord endures forever. The man is the word of the Lord endures forever. You didn't hear that? He is letting you see that the man is the word of the Lord endures forever. Did you get that? Then he says, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Notice that he separates the word from the gospel. This is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. He is saying that the content of the news is that the word endures forever. And being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. So he's saying to us that the believer, the born again man, he has the characteristics of the word of God. The born again man has the characteristics of the word of God. The born again man. He's birth process is the word. His birth process. So we can safely say the word of God and the believer they have the same nature. The word of God and the believer they have the same nature. They will endure forever. The word endures forever. The believer endures forever. So having said that Look at this now. So we are born into an eternal state. You don't grow into this. Mm -mm. You don't grow into this eternal state because if you have to grow into it, it is not eternal. If you have to grow into sonship, then that sonship is not eternal. What is eternal, you don't improve on. You don't improve on anything that is eternal. You are born into an eternal state. Peter then says, wherefore, because of this, because of what? Because you are born of the world. Because you are born of the gospel. Wherefore, because of this. So observe, one is primary the other is secondary. One is primary, the other secondary. That is, one leads to the other. He is not teaching spiritual growth yet. He is about to tell you what spiritual growth is. Spiritual growth does not affect your birth. Spiritual growth does not affect your birth. 
Spiritual growth is the fruit of your birth. Spiritual growth is the fruit of your birth. It doesn't affect your birth. Spiritual growth is the fruit of your birth. So he says, wherefore, laying aside all malice. Laying aside what? All malice. First Peter chapter 2 verse 1. Having laid the foundation, it now comes to chapter 2 verse 1. We are for laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. Let's check the word laying aside. Let's check that word. Laying aside. What does it mean? It's the Greek word apotitemai. Apo is to take away. Apo, A-P-O, to take away. Every time you find that word used, apotitemai, is used nine times. Nine times. You know, now look through these examples very well. These examples I want to give you now. Because sometimes when a word is used in a doctrine, listen carefully. Sometimes when a word is used in a doctrine, you get the understanding more than you, I mean you get the understanding more when it is used in a story. When a word is used in a doctrine, you get the understanding of that word more when it is used in a story. So look at this. Matthew 14:3. Laying aside, lay aside. Matthew 14:3. For Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother, Philip's wife. So whatever you put away is not you. Whatever you put away is not you. Did you get that? For Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison. It's not Herod that went to prison. Herod was here, but he put John in prison. He didn't go into prison. So whatever you put away or you lay aside is not you. I'm teaching good. Whatever you lay aside is not you. Acts 7, 58. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7, verse 58. And cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. Something they could do without. Whatever you can do without is not you. Romans 13, 12. Romans chapter 13, verse number 12. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us cast off. The works of darkness shows you they are foreign and they are strange to you. They are not a part of you. So that's why you cast them off. Ephesians 4.22 Ephesians chapter 4 verse 22 That you put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful laws. All the writers of the epistles used the same words. And they were all saying the same things. The former conversation. The word former means what was behind you. So that means it's always what is not with you and what is not in you that you lay aside. What is not with you and what is not in in you. That's what you lay aside. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 25. Ephesians chapter 4 verse number 25. Wherefore putting away lying speak every man truth with his neighbor for we are members one of another. Why did he say that? Look at verse 24. Ephesians 4 24. And that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Because you have put on the new man put off. Okay? Colossians 3.8. Colossians 
chapter 3, verse number 8. And of course, you know in this church that when I'm beginning a series, that's how we travel, right? We take time to go through scriptures properly, so we lay solid foundation. But now, you also put off all this anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. How can you say something came from my mouth and it didn't come from me? Because what you put off is not in you, it's not with you. So now he says, even what you speak is not from you. That is contrary to you. Even though you spoke it, it didn't come from you. I'm teaching good. Look at verse 7 of Colossians 3. Colossians 3, 7. <clears throat> In the which you also walk some time. Some time. When you lived in them. That means you are no more living in them. And they are no more living in you. So look at verse 8. Now that's why it's easy for him to say in verse 8. But now you also put off all this. Because it's no more in you. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. So he said, I lived in something. Yet he is saying to put it off my mouth. I thought he would say, which you live in. He didn't say, which you used to live in. But you're not there. Even though you're not there, it is still coming out of your mouth. But it is not part of you. It's not part of you. You're just pretending. Now, you don't live in there anymore. So, which means it's always secondary. Something that is not in you is strange. So, to really receive this, you receive it by faith. You know, it's like I'm struggling with this habit. Then he said, it's not your habit. It's not your habit. Say, ah, Pastor, do you know I'm struggling? No, it's not your habit. Stop the struggle. Just realize that it's not your habit. You say, I don't know how to talk. I talk anyhow. He says, no. It's a conversation of the old man. It's not you now that is conversing it. He said, I did this yesterday. He said, no. They are not your works. They are the works of darkness. Put them off. Teaching good. I mean, these are things I do regularly. He says, no, it's not you. He said, but I do it. No, it's not you. Being born again, not of corruptible spora. Look at Hebrews 11.40. Hebrews 11.40. Get him blessed? Hebrews 11.40. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Hebrews 12.1 now. Hebrews 12.1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. Do you know why he called it weight? It is weight because it is not part of you. It is weight. Anything that is a weight is on, is not in. It's not part of you. So every time they used it, they use it to after they describe who you are. This is who you are. Put that off. It's not part of you. James 1.21 James 1.21 Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to what? Save your soul. Why will he say lay aside? Because he told you in James 1.18 of his own will he has begotten you. James 1.18 put it up. Of his own will begotten us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creature. So because he has begotten you by the word of truth the superfluity of naughtiness is not a part of you. It's not a part of you. Even if it is functioning around you, it's not part of you. That is not you. That misbehavior is not you. That stupid behavior, it cannot be you. You are born 
of the incorruptible seed. Your characteristics are the same with the word of God. You and the word of God share in the same identity. You exhibit the same character. You are born of his word. Lay aside all filthiness. Then he goes ahead to say, when you hear the word, it's like you are looking at the mirror and you are seeing yourself. So every time we are preaching, what you are hearing is that in your hearing, you are seeing you. They exact you. They real you. So every time the word apotitemai is used, it's used for a conduct that is not found in you. A conduct that is not found in you. So spiritual growth is not trying to be a nice person. Spiritual growth is not trying to be kind. Even though you know you are not kind. Trying to be nice. That's not spiritual growth. Pretending all over the place. That's not spiritual growth. You are a nasty person. But when you see people you are smiling. That's not spiritual growth. Spiritual growth is not pretense. If you are trying to be kind and trying to be a nice person, you are in the works of the flesh. You are in the works of the flesh. But you see, if first of all, you realize that you are kind by nature, that is how spiritual growth starts. It starts from you realizing who you are. Then you now walk in the reality of who you are. That's spiritual growth. You must first of all know that you are kind. If you are trying to be kind and you are eventually kind, you didn't grow. <laughs> if you are trying, 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 and then finally you succeeded to be kind, you didn't grow. You just did mental exercise. You must first of all know that you are kind. Somebody shout, I am kind. Somebody shout, I am love. Somebody shout, I am goodness. That's who you are. So because you are goodness, to be good is an outflow of who you are. You don't try to be. You just be. Teaching good? You know you can produce works of kindness and they are the works of the flesh. And you can produce works of kindness and they are the works of the spirit. Works of the flesh because you are trying to do something to justify yourself. Works of the spirit because you know you are already justified. And you are a new creature in Christ. Bible says you are his workmanship created where? In Christ Jesus unto good works which God before ordained that we should walk in them. In other words, you see the works not as a function of something you try to do to be justified but as a fruit of your justification. As a fruit. So the first one is self-help. Trying to. You're in the flesh. The second one is the fruit of growth. Say with me, I am kind. I am born of the incorruptible seed of the gospel. Say it very loud. I want the radio audience to hear you. I have purified my soul by believing the gospel. I know that already. So I lay aside. I reject anything that is contrary to my person. I didn't hear your amen. That is strip yourself of any foreign stuff. Take it away. It's like cleansing a, clo a cloth that has dirt. The cloth didn't, didn't come with the death. The death came on the cloth. So you remove the death and leave the cloth. The death is not part of the cloth. The death was not manufactured with the cloth. But the death came on the cloth. So you wash the death off. But the cloth remained the way it is. How many of you understand what that is? That's a weak illustration. But I know you got the point. It's the same thing. Put it away. You are kind. You are a wonderful person. Talk to somebody sitting by you and say you are kind. Tell the person sitting by you, you are a wonderful person. No, say it three times. Two more times. 
last time. Some of you have hardly had anybody call you a wonderful person. That's why I made you repeat it three times. Say it for the last time. Now, say to yourself, I'm a wonderful person. Wonderful person. That's who I am. Because you are born of the incorruptible spora. You are lovely. Turn, turn to three people, tell them, you're lovely, you're lovely, you're lovely. Tell yourself, I am lovely. Yeah, I know people have told you you are very difficult to get along with. People have told you you are very nasty. People have told you, hey, you are lovely. Say, I am lovely. I'm not defined by what people say. I am defined by who I am. I am lovely. So because you are lovely, it is easy for you to be lovely. Praise God. You are not sinning as a delight. You do righteous because you are righteous. Your seed is in you. So that is where spiritual growth is. Spiritual growth starts with identity. You don't grow into identity. That is works. You grow from identity. You grow from identity. So because you are born again, lay aside this, lay aside that. And First Peter chapter 2 verse 2, as newborn babes as newborn babes. You desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Somebody say desire. Say it again. Say I have to desire. See, the sincere milk of the word is not given to you as a gift. You desire it. You desire it. You know why you're here this evening? Huh? You know why you're here this evening? You desire. And because you desire, you will grow. Because you are where the milk of the word is communicated. Say with me, I will grow. Say with me very loud, I'm growing. And say the fruit of my growth is ministry. Say I'm growing. Say growth is the fruit of being born again. Say growth is the fruit of being born again. Say ministry is the fruit of growth. Did you get that? Say growth is the fruit of being born again. Ministry is the fruit of growth. When I'm born again, I grow. When I grow, I do ministry. See? So ministry is a fruit of spiritual growth. And spiritual growth is a fruit of regeneration. Can I hear a powerful amen? Stand on your feet. That's all I got for you tonight. Was that some study tonight? I said, was that some study tonight? Yes. Glory to God. Stand on your feet this night. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mambrondazokolodabosha. I'd like you to turn to somebody and tell the person you are kind. You are gentle. You are patient. That's who you are. Turn to somebody tell him you are righteous. You are holy. As holy as Jesus. That's who you are. Is that who you are? Say I'm lovely. Tell somebody you are lovely. Shakuratasaya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell somebody you are good. Because that's who you are. So it is easy for you to produce goodness. See, you don't try to be good. No, you are good. So goodness is natural. Who am I talking to in this building tonight? Glory to God. Let's blast in tongues in this house. Breda zoko lodo boro kotona kalina mama mamres. Legro do zoko lodo bambra gadangere ne mosoto le de babra gadangere ne mosa kele ne mosodia. Legra dada le boro kotona kele ne mama mamra. Babro jakala na babro gadaza kele ne mambro gadoza kele ne mama manda. Lebro jakala na babra gadoso pira keti na kele ne mama mba. Egele ne mambro gadaza kele ne mambro sakala na maya. 
Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Rakoto mengele ne mamba rakodo zakele ne mamamre. Rosoto baba la tengele de rabanzo te la bayanda. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost more. Let's pray more in the Holy Ghost. Let's support the shata bayata. Liga baba ba sombre le ketendia la baton shato bayiga. These realities let it drive down on our inside. Lebo sanda imbrasu tengre tenge kabado shata ya ekelete manakatoba rasanto la bada. Empratete kitaka likabato rikabato empralatu shakataya lingra basubre likete ramando shondo itakata rikababondo kotoya eratete na kataga ebado sute kimbrata ele paraka tana mayanda. Let's drink into this insight. Let's drink into this insight. The revelation of who we are, the riches we have in Christ. Pate likabayatata embrason tolomashata embratan shata. I am of the decent of they that are lovely. A sonda he cover satire is in my nature. Paraku satire and brasande lekete ayato shatalamande and bralatosha iatakata and baratonja tombalika and la mambra talamashata and bresata and bresata and bresata and bresata. I make manifest the fragrance and bralakatataya of this love that the father. Father that is at watching me, Ashaka la ba 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 ya. The fragrance is spread everywhere. Indre sota namanda, he ando shata ba ya ta. Keba po koya ta, erete ketona manaka, elega katana maleko kotoya. Jaku tata, parato toko, he ataka namansa. Indre su bratele monde, para shata, para shata, para shata, para shata. I know my descent. I know my descent. I know where I am sourced from. A superataya king asala ronsande ketelaba. There is no defect. There is no defect in me. Zakabato nayata embrasata. I have no defect in character. I have no defect in disposition. Kebato na koteya esatan rusha kabayata embrasomba la manande iandosha 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 iandosha. I know my roots. I know my roots, the place where I'm sourced from. Ketona Mayanda, Eya Shatata, Kabatusa Tobayate, Kamando Subayataya, Impresuta Namanda, the consciousness, Kiatona Manakatayada, Ebatona Mayata, Eresuta Namanda, Ashata Mayata, Imondosa, Parako Kotona, Perekenatoda, Parana Makata, Kigato Nasuta Nabea, Pombosuja, Haska, Piananda. Piananda, 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 Shakwatesha, Katosa Tobata, Inababa Katalamande, Arasata Mayate, Into Shatayaba, Ah, habit drops of me. Whatsoever habit is not of the descent of he that is born of the Father, Setoba Sateya, it drops of me. Katosha Talamananda, Eto Mayakatayata, I lay aside, Paleto Sotamayata, and Basotolamananda. Like a cart, like a vessel, I throw them off. He has some alataya. I walk away. I walk away. Ke sobra la tanamanda from the strange environment. I go masute kabashata la bada embresondo shataya embaraka tanamande inko soto ya pakata la mashata ya ba arama ba 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 yata impro soto ya daba. My descent is of him that is undefiled. My descent. It's of him that is undefiled. He suba la tana mananda. He ando shateya. Parakoto na bosiaba. I see differently. Eba sombre le keteya. I see like my father. I see the way my father sees. And prasu shata. In preto la manda. I see men with the grace of Christ. I see men with the eyes of the grace of the father. He krasu telebrateya. He ando shatata. He kaba soto bayata. Make it all about shut up, Abaya. Make it for the boy to you. And therefore, I declare the love walk is my walk because I know my descent. I walk in love. Ah, shut up, Abaya Tata. I walk in love. The love walk is so bad in Ataya in 2023. I walk in love. I walk the love walk. I walk the love walk. Shakuta. 
Liando Subalata, Amama Baba Shataya, Keto Satanamanda, in Brasota, the effulgence of his presence. Oh, they go with me. As Satanda Kataya, and Brasota Namanda, I put on, I put on, I put on, because that's who I am. Shakwa Tona Mayata, Alabaya Tona Mayataya. Kindo Shataya, Rekata Masatea, Poboroso Tokateta Kata, Pendusha Tomananda, Ramatabaya, 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 Shakwata, 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 Kebato Sanamanda, then Brasol Tonamo Shata, and Berete Kate, Ramamababaya. Kianda Sata, Lambronzo Toya, Resatoba Yakata, Kemanan Sopra de Catete, Liando Shata Bayata, Kembresute, Arama Shatea, Pondo Subalatana, Kemanacuste, Kemando Sombra Taka, Kekata, Kebalatonda, Kebayakanda, Kebayatange, Kilabatoge, Kilabayata, Ascatoma la Sande Lecate, Ana Mamamaya Shatea, Poroco Sotoyamanda, the fullness of the Father, the fullness of the Father. In all his wisdom and infinite variety in Christ Jesus that is in me is made manifest. Katu Shatea Parakasatayata in Bresutele Madanda. And as a result, I do ministry. I do ministry with ease. I do ministry without struggle. Parate Shataya Ibabayatata. Embrasataya, ministry without offense, ministry without offense, Basatoshataya, because I walk in love, because I walk in love, I walk in love among the brethren, Shakatoshate, Abayatona Shateya, Bakarabayatata. My heart is enlarged. My heart is enlarged. Kindness. Posito Namanada. Kind. Every day, kindness flows from me. The love of the Father flows from me. I am gentle. More gentle than ever before. More gentle. He has sobra. Karabashataya. He bayatonamande. As sobra. The love of the Father expresses itself in me. Pasato Shatege. He bayatonamashataya. Yando Shatana Mande, Prasutana, 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 Meshokana Bata, and therefore ministry prospers in my hand. Ministry prospers in my head, and by these clusters, 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 I become a rallying point of men. As a payata, when the Father gives me souls, I keep them, I keep men, I keep souls. Pasato Shatabala, in Balatea, how such prospers in my hands, disciples prosper in my hand. My son, the two class, they prosper. Keto Shataya, in Payatata, none is lost in my hand. Pasheto katata, merekete kataya, parokoto namata, kibaya takanata, imprasuta ta, shakuta, shiangwa tota, perekete ne matota, shakoto na, kinga doshoto, ebarasota, emanakaya, itabaya ta, ekoroto no, oshkata, kembresu palata taya ta. Yande Shataya, Porosu de Seteya, Ambra Sande Hiamande, La Casata Labata, Porosoto Mayata, Baba Baba Baya Shandaria, Kiando Suta, Baraku Satoye, Beraketo Nasataya, Kenamama Masutaya, Ken Bristo, Panikato Sataya, Kenamaba Baya Sotoya, Iacro So Shata, Yatama Mabayara. I have a commanding influence over men by the gospel. Siato Satanama. And I return, and I return to my station, Pareto Satoya, and do more. I return with greater exploit, I return with greater results. Pasetona Mashataya, Perekatayate, Pangondo Suteke, Kigata Nakota, Sibato Nakotena, Egresuta Namayata, Rebando Shande, Kabando Suteva, Poroko Sotoyo, Iska. Escuchata, Perica Tushata, Granosca, Bracatacata, in the Baba Baba Baba, Machate, Macatayaba. I have compassion, compassion for the lost. I am not indifferent to the state of the soul of man. I have compassion, 
I am moved by men who are in darkness. Kasuteska. Ah, shut up. My heart is not cold. My heart is alive. Who shabayatata? Yes, they are saba. Pandeshita. Ratakatata. Liendo soto. Prakata natata. Porosoto matekata. Amamamamayas. Posonte. Prosonte. Prosonte. My heart is like the heart of the Father. Eshataba. Make it on Amanda. I see men the way my father sees men. Ashandeyaba. I see the nations. I see my community the way the father sees them. I see the nations the way the father sees them. Pass it on Amanda. My perspective is aligned to that of the father because of my father's son. Ashkato Zataya. Akabaya Shata. Lingo Sobaya. Raton Zotobaya Tete. Magabasa Tonabata. Embresute le mashaya, remado shote, brakata ta 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 ah shaba baba. I want you to grab somebody right now. Grab somebody, grab somebody, grab somebody. Speak words uh, into the life of that person. Bayeko to the manda. You are more loving. Kebaya ta ta. You are kind. You are affectionate. Asatobaya. You have understanding. You bear with men. Sakola baya ta. Eh shaba yaba. Ibra soda. You cover a multitude of sin. Even among the saints, Shakota Labaya, Keleto Basatata, Rebosha Brandeketeya, Amashata, you do ministry without offense. Sapat, Shapat, Pasat, Takota, Ekata, Ilata, Eboto, Keraba, Payana, Ereke, Ketola, Rabato, Kiata, Adama, Payeto, Shigama, Payana, Dataka. Ministry like never before. He and Shapataya. There are no limitations to you. House churches closed as prosperous in your hand. Ayatatatatata. Parakato shate. Mi baba baba sotaya. E kabayataya. E mama mama ya. You are being an amazement to yourself. An amazement to yourself. Kate sobrateya. E yata. This is your year. This is your year. Parasute sataya. Parande shataya. Of responsibility. Divine responsibility. Arako Toyota, Makata Nakota Natega, Miata Tata Tata, De Sotanabate, Miange Shata, Parekaya, 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 Bayekera. Speak to somebody else right now. I speak fire in your bones. Fire in your bones. Fire in your bones. From today you become restless. Kedato Nakatataya. Restless. Concerning God's plan, concerning global evangelism, you become restless. Shakataya, miandekete, makatayata. You reflect the Father in all things. Shakwatos, 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 shakwatos. You dream men, you speak men, you meditate men, you rise up and see men, you reach men. Ashatobra kayatataya, kindo subayata. Reketuja kateya, rakatana matoka, rigatana datata, shapa tula, shapa tula, shapa tula, shapa tula, mekota namna, eh shata. Speak to him, speak to him. I declare you are on motion. You are on motion. You are on motion. There's no standing. You are on motion. Shakato nataya, eh, shadege. Shad again, shad again, shad again, shad again. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. We are here to drink. We are drinking of the spirit. We are drinking of the spirit for the days ahead. Parakuso toto yadata. Eh, shata. No feeble amongst them. Kateta latata. Fire in your bones. Fire in your bones. Fire in your bones. The fire of the zeal of the Lord. Shate bagata. Makata labashata. Eketete. And this year shall be the day of the beginning of exploit in ministry in your life. Rakatu shabataya. Mika gaga gaga gaga. Brigatona. Brigatona. Yatona. 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 Yando shatana. Shakulata. Solo totoyata. Reta. 
in your norokosa. Speak to that person right now. I speak to your body. I speak to your body. Body, you are perfected. Body, you are healed. Shut up. I speak divine power. Into your bones, your marrow, your sinew, your organs. I speak to your organs. They conform to the will of God. There is no limitation to divine assignment. Kandolata. Kandolata. Shakototoyata. Perita netota. Satona makata. Kigogo soto batatata. Yamba tapaya. Zule te 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 te. Lift those hands and thank him. 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 Rasuta. Liando prasataya. Ila manongo lodo bo sakele de bababa. Engele de mosotala. Legro do sukala da babre gede sekila na maha. Angele de bo shaka. You walk worthy of the Lord. 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 Unto all pleasing. Legro sopira na mana kata. You are fruitful unto every good worker. Membra da sotola na mange. Angele de mo sokala da baba. I like you to pray one more prayer for yourself. I shall not be distracted. And I shall not be. I shall not be distracted. My focus remains resolute. I am focused in fulfilling the will of God. I answer to the call of God. I know the hope of my calling. Pray for yourself. I shall not be distracted. My eyes are on the ball. I am focused. I walk worthy of the Lord. Unto all pleasing, I am fruitful unto every good work. Mambre get this sakaya, a gale de bosha cantete, a gangangangale and a mosotalaba. I walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. I am strengthened with might by the Spirit in the inner man. Angelebo sotala, I get tambanga, I get tambanga, I get tambanga, I get tambanga, a lobo sokele de braya, angre de soca, angre de soca, angre de I set my focus. I look forward towards the mark of the high calling. I look forward towards the mark of the high calling. I press forward. I fight the good fight of faith. I stay in the fight. A great and effectual door is open unto me. And the adversaries, I have a mouth and a wisdom that they cannot resist nor gain say. A door of of utterance, angel and emosata, the nations are open, angel and emosata, platforms are opening for the proclamation of the gospel of the truth, angel and emosata, angel and emosata, the vision finds fulfillment, the vision finds expression in the hearts of men, in the minds of men, in the nations of the earth, in the cities, in the villages, in the continents, the message of Christ, angel and emosata, akita patana, angel and emosata, rako. Shataya, Rako Shataya, Agame Sota, Angemo Sota Laraba. Put your two hands on your head. Begin to pray for yourself. I am healthy. I am stronger. Sickness and disease cannot hide in my body. Infirmity cannot hide in my body. My bones are stronger. My mind is stronger. My organs are stronger. My heart, my liver, my kidneys, my bones, my joints, my marrow. My youth is renewed like an eagle. My blood vessels, all my cells are refreshed. Angel of Sata, I attend to the word of God. I incline my ears to his sayings. I keep the word of God in the midst of my heart. It is life to me. It is health to my flesh. Agasutaya, Agasutaya, the message of Christ, the word of God, dwells in me richly unto all wisdom. Legasumbana, Angelerebo Sotaya, Agasokeya Dada, Agelerebo Shata, no disease, no sickness. I am establishing righteousness. I am far from oppression. Lekasutata, no weapon formed against me prosper. I am delivered. 
from all all traps i'm delivered from the snare of the fowler the snare is broken i am delivered from wicked and unreasonable men i declare by the strength of god by the might of god i am a shatter i have heard that the everlasting god does not faint and does not falter for even the youth shall faint and utterly fall but they that wait on the lord shall renew their strength my strength is renewed i mount up with wings as eagle i run and not weary i walk and not faint i am going in the strength of god's word i am going in the power of his might i am going in the strength of the lord i am going in the power of his might I preach the word in and out of season. I preach the word in and out of season. Thank you, Father. Lift your hands and begin to give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him thanks to the Father who has made us partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Ziba dongo jangi angata saka. Lebro tasaka lera. Agele rebo zakaya. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. For this is the confidence that we have. That whatever we ask, you hear it us. And because you hear us, we have our desired petition. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Glory to God. 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 This will be the best year of your life. Look forward, look up, look up. See it, see it. It's going to be the best year of your life. You will do ministry like never before. You will achieve great things like never before. You will do exploits like never before. You will live in this world as if you're not in this world. You're shielded, you're secured in the name of Jesus. Mama and I were in the car yesterday and we were talking about a situation. And I said to Mama, when you are full of the word of God, it makes you like a superman. The word of God filling your heart gives you the status of a superman. You live in this world in the midst of the same problems that are killing people and you're not noticing because the word of God immunizes you. It builds a shield of protection. You are walking in the midst of devils and evil. You are not noticing. David said, thou by my word had made me stronger than my enemies. For they are ever with me. So even though they are around me, I am not aware. Because there is a shield of God's word. Listen, as we stay here every day learning and learning, consume the word. Consume the word and let the word consume your thoughts. Let the word consume your emotions. So that when things come against you, you are not aware of it. I decree that this year, this year you are shielded from all evil. Shielded from all harm. You will walk in the midst of evil as if they don't exist. In the name of Jesus. And I decree you will do ministry, you will do exploits. Through you, the kingdom of God will make maximum progress. In the name of Jesus. Great grace is upon you. In Jesus name we pray. Can I hear that amen like thunder? Tomorrow evening 5.30 we're here. And of course. I start teaching at 6. And then we continue. You know the fast continues after now. But you can drink water if you want to drink water. You okay. You can drink water. Okay. But stay. Listen. God is going to give you instructions. Direction. Things are going to open up to you. As to the things God will have you do. So be sensitive, be attentive, pay attention. I didn't hear a good amen. Yeah. 5 a.m. We're praying at 5 to 6. It's on online, on Facebook, on YouTube. It's on Kingdom Life Network. Hook up with the prayers. And then after 6, you can break your fast. We'll see you again tomorrow evening. Are you excited? Grab your offerings. Let's give as we celebrate Christ on our way. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Those of you online can also send in your offerings. The banking details are scrolling. Every time we gather and assemble together before the word of God, we honor God's word with our givings. Every time. Every time. 
That's how we live. We are a people of honor. So grab your offerings this evening. Thank you, Lord. Those online, the banking details are their television. You know, all of you, wherever you're watching. Father, we pray that as we give tonight, our hearts are filled with joy. And we thank you that this year we are committed to the cause of Christ. Therefore, we lack nothing. We have resources to advance your kingdom. And in the name of Jesus, I decree for everyone here, your needs are made supernatural. Where you need a miracle, receive a miracle. Receive a miracle in the name of Jesus. Great grace is upon you. In Jesus' precious name. Can I hear that amen like thunder? Praise God. You just drop your offerings anywhere on the pulpit. Have a blessed evening. We'll see you tomorrow at 5.30 p.m. Be blessed. Amen. We trust that you have been blessed by this message. To order the complete series of this message and all the messages by Dr. Abel Daminer, please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com.